What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gaming Without Parole. Sitting across from me this week and every week, Freddy and Jason should watch out. It's Desra. And sitting across from me is Brian Paul. If you only knew how many takes that took. <laughs> Happy Halloween, you guys. Yeah. Like, I am absolutely thrilled. This is my it's favorite the most time. Wonderful time. It's sort of where I was going. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, and, and, and the month is already flying by, and I'm a little, I'm crazy. A little sad about that. It's done. I yeah. mean, by the time this airs, yeah, it's yeah. totally done. Uh, so, no, no, so thanks, sad. guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sad, too. Uh, but we wanted to do something special. Since, mm-hmm. since fall and Halloween, this is our favorite time of the year. We wanted to do a special episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR for you guys. Something that you guys have been demanding us talk about since actually since we started talking about PSVR pretty much that of course is fishing master fishing master guys I gotta tell you it's so much fun to fish underneath the San Francisco Ridge on the San Francisco Bay especially when there's fireworks going off let's let him off the the proverbial hook yeah this is Resident Evil 7 what what <laughs> so uh so we've been trying to scare you yes all month long yes uh, we've we've only done it successfully a couple times. Yeah, there's been a f- couple, you know, jolts here and there. Nothing I would call like the big ah, you know, throwing the headset off, yeah. nothing like that. Um, the closest we came was don't knock twice. Yep. Had had that one moment uh, that that really kind of got me and ah, made me give me one of those. But so far, nothing has really given me like this the scare that everyone else gets that everyone wants to see me have. So do we, do I want to uh, spill that right now? Or do you want to wait till let's, the? Let's just get it out of the way. This is what people want to know. Give the people what they want. Sorry. I, I wish I could. I wish we had great video of me, like, screaming and throwing the headset off my head and, you know, cowering behind the couch or something, but... And trust sorry. me, no one is more disappointed in this news than me. And me! I, I wanted... <laughs> no, I wanted this to happen. I wanted to be able to prove that I was a human being. You know, we, we went... We talked a little bit about... We went to Six Flags Fright Fest, and I realized halfway through it that, you know what? I'm just... Oh, please. I, I'm just not fun. Six Flags Fright Fest well, was- Awful. Yeah. Like, it's, oh man. <laughs> like, I've been to a lot of haunted houses in my life, and and I think Six Flags Fright Fest. Mm-hmm. Can't believe I managed to say that yeah. over and over. Uh, just pretty much the, the the worst put together haunted houses I've seen in we a long be sp- time. Specific. This is the Six Flags New England. We're not speaking about any of the other ones. Yeah, Those could no be amazing, idea. as far as we know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's uh, off topic. But we, yeah, <laughs> we wanted to, we wanted to scare Des and 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 and. And so this is the Resident Evil 7. I, I've, I've gone on record about this numerous times. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil 7 is a game for me. Yes. That took 14 hours. Now, you might, if you've played this yourself, you might know that it's like a 9 to like 11 hour game. Mm-hmm. So you're like, Brian, what were you doing for the extra 3 to 5 hours? And I'll tell you what I was doing for the extra 3 to 5 Changing hours. Changing his diapers. It was a lot of, what was that? Did you just hear that? <laughs> is somebody behind me? Like, it was, it was that for three to five extra hours because most people played through the game and they were like, oh, I'm going to go do this. Now I'm going to go do this. Now I'm going to do this. And I would be like, I'm going to go do this. Stop. I'm going to go do this. Stop. Yeah. Because I was petrified for all 14 hours. Wow. Yeah. That, that's, that's great. I, it I, was I, the scariest thing I'd ever done in my entire yeah. life. In my entire life. The sca- it, was, it, was, it was 10 times longer than the longest scary movie I've ever watched. Way scarier. Yeah. So I guess I guess the uh, the verdict is in. I'm just broken. Okay. Yeah. And again, I, I really want to clarify. This isn't like I'm too manly to be scared by this stuff. It's just something's just not firing in my 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 my, uh, my little lizard brain there. Yeah. I, I, although I think we we have in our in our conversations and experiences together this month, we have sort of figured out one of the things, the things that trigger normal humans like Brian to say like oh my gosh this is going to be really scary I need to get tensed up I get I see those same cues yeah. but instead of getting all tensed up I'm like oh okay well we're setting up for this thing that's supposed to be scary now yeah uh, we, we talked about one specific example in, uh, earlier today mm-hmm. we we're talking about one specific uh, we, we don't want to ruin anything we don't want to spoil anything yeah. we're going to keep this as spoiler free as possible but I was we, he and I were discussing one specific room in Resident Evil 7 and I was like yeah but like knowing that there was gonna be a monster mm-hmm. after you solved this puzzle, like you could just feel it coming. Right, it was the, really telegraphed. It was definitely absolutely this is coming. The suspense was building for me, and I was I was quite literally on the edge of my seat. And 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 so when it happened, the suspense had built up so much. 
I was just like, I was just waiting to scream. Like I was like holding my breath. Yeah. I was clenching my teeth. And I was like, couldn't be more amped up for this scare. Mm-hmm. Even though I knew it was coming. Yeah. And you knew it was coming. And it had, the, yeah. like you said, the opposite effect. It on had it. the exactly opposite. Because I knew it was coming, I was just like, okay, just get ready for it. And oh, there it is. You know, I was saying like, for me, what would have been scary or really clever is telegraph that this thing is going to happen. Yeah. And then it doesn't. Oh, what? And then all of a sudden, you know, and then you get gets you, um, which they didn't do uh, ever, which is why I think that one in Don't Knock Twice did get me, <laughs> yeah. because that is one of those, you know, uh, without spoiling that, you set up a very normal everyday action that you do all the time. Right. And then in that moment, because you're not thinking, oh, there's, you know, something scary about to happen. That's when they get you. Right. Um, so. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the building suspense uh, apparently has the exact opposite effect on me. So, so you weren't scared? No, there. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie and say like there was. You know, there were a few like oh, you know, moments where something I wasn't expecting happened or something jumped out. But that was more like just a little startle, not like oh, you know. Yeah. So regardless of whether you were scared or not, yes, there's no denying that Resident Evil Seven is sort of. Without rebooting the story, because mm-hmm. uh, it, it, at this point, I think a lot of us wanted the the series to be rebooted. Yeah, uh, it is it is a return to survival horror form. Absolutely, it's something that the series hadn't seen much of in a very long time, with mm-hmm. with certain exceptions. I know the the revelations uh, side story. There's that was a little more survival horror, right. but but as far as the main game goes, yeah. the last time we saw anything really survival horror was probably like Resident Evil 4 and even that is stretching it that was like when it started going a little more on an uh, yeah. on an action slant it's been an action shooter really for the past few uh, uh, yeah. variations of it like a Various. decade yeah yeah, yeah it's it's in 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 Resident Evil 1 and 2 mm-hmm. I think Resident Evil 2 is probably one of my favorite games of all time okay and so and so being a return to form being like real survival horror again but now in first person and even better in VR. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know the, we talk to we talk to the game cats all the time. We we, we always uh, discuss what games do we wish mm-hmm. were in VR. Yep. And I've got to say, that Capcom already gave it to us. If Resident Evil Seven is like, it feels like playing Resident Evil One again. This time in first person and in VR, yep. and I'm like, that's what I've always wanted. And they gave it to us, you know, without me begging mm-hmm. for long, long periods of time. One and two in that in that vein. I mean, it feels the same, even to our jaded like gamer brains, because it's bringing it so fresh. You know, Resident Evil One was so like intense and crazy because there was nothing else like it at, at yeah. the time. You know, and now we get to have that experience again. You know, what 15, 20 years later? I don't even know how many years. Uh, ninety six. Ninety six. So. Holy crap, we're old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's able to bring that same kind of experience even to, like I said, our jaded gamer brains. So that, that that's a pretty cool trick they pulled off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, being able to, like, use, like, current-gen graphics and current-gen hardware and putting it in the first person, uh, there was still all of these throwbacks, all of these things that, like, made, us, made me feel warm and fuzzy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they were using cassette tapes instead of ink ribbons, but it was yeah. the same deal. You're collecting these things going, man, I hope I always have at least three in my back pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, every time I use one, I need a, at least a surplus to... Yeah. Uh, also, um, safe rooms. The, there's something warm and fuzzy about being like, you know, being in danger the entire time you're in this game, yeah. and then entering a safe room and hearing that music. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, you're good now. No one's coming in here. <laughs> I'm good. There's probably, a, uh, you know, a place to save my game. See, and that's where they should be. See, that that's what would get me. Like, exactly. Oh, I'm in the safe room now. Then the wall busts open, and yeah. Yep. But uh, there's in those safe rooms are item boxes which yep. again warm and fuzzy you're like here's all the stuff that I like stored away mm-hmm. because, because it's a survival horror game I took yep. all of my ammo and I shoved it in this box because I don't have a lot of yep. room in my inventory which is another uh, limited inventory is another uh, survival horror uh, trope mm-hmm. that that again is here it is um, and, uh, and, and it's just it's just all of these things that made Resident Evil great and they just managed to they managed to create a game out of it um, after all this time. Yeah. Uh, and just and it, and it just it just feels really good. It, it's a it's a real. It's for the fans. It's for the yeah. real fans. Not and not like the Johnny Come Lately. Oh, I love I love RE5 or RE6. Those, no offense. If you love those games, that's good on you. But 
But as true Resident this Evil fans, that game. <laughs> we've been we've been waiting for this for a very yeah. long time. But that's not to say that like you have to have this whole history with it. Nope. You know, I, um, you know, I'm on the other side. Like, and actually, kind of my my opening statement is honestly, you know, on this kind of thing, Brian and I couldn't be more different. Horror games are probably my least favorite genre of game, and survival horror is probably my least favorite type of horror game. Um, it's not something that I'm gonna like super excited to play. Um, so take that into account with everything here that being said um, because of that i don't have a huge backlog experience with resident evil i don't i'm not really immersed in the mythos i've never seen a single one of the movies thank god yeah um oh, but Just... i was totally able to fall into the universe and you know everything well everything that was able to make, be made sense of i can make sense of it yeah and that's and that's why like this being <clears throat> this being uh, you know we maybe we should have started with this it's called Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, right? Biohazard, of course, is what the series is known as in Japan. Yes. Right? In Japan, this game is called Biohazard 7 Resident Evil, right? It's, I see what you did there, Sony. It's, it's, like, it's like Capcom decided they're going to, um, they're just going to, like, bring this series back to its roots yeah. and connect everybody again. And, and it's just, it just, with, they managed to, what they did really well Mm-hmm. Was that they managed to move the pin, right? They picked up the pin from Raccoon City, from all these places where the zombie outbreak is happening, yeah. and, and they and they just like boom, here you go, Louisiana, yeah. And, like, and here's something that's happening over here, mm-hmm. right? Because it's still happening in the same world, right, right. But they just moved the pin. This we are talking about Resident Evil Seven proper, the, proper the edition that's out now with the updates, but not the DLC or anything like that. That's that's. We, for, we for could really. do entire separate episodes about just the first batch of DLC yeah. alone, uh, the the um, the end of Zoe uh, and the not a hero stuff. Just we're just gonna, we're just going to take a giant step back from all of it, yeah. uh, and, and just focus on the and the core game here because there's so much to talk about with the core game. Yeah. So let's talk about the core game. Okay. Something happens, right? You're you're this guy. You're Ethan Winters. Sure. Is that right, Ethan Winters? Ethan. And and your wife Mia goes missing. Yes. Okay. Years. Uh, I think yeah, it was like two or three years. I think it's three yeah, years. Three years. Yeah, that right? sounds right. Yeah. And finally, we get a little bit of information about where she is, right. and we head on over to the Louisiana Bayou to go track Yahoo. her down. What? Yep. Yeah. Yahoo. No. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and so and, and and so you we you get there right, and you're outside of the, you're outside of this estate. Yes. You chained. Chained locks, chained uh, gates. Mm-hmm. Right, no way of getting in. It's kind of circumvent the property to find find the way in. Yep. Uh, and and it's come across a news van. A news van. There, there's you know little things here and there, and and I say it it starts setting the mood a little bit right away. And, but but what happens is the moment you step inside the house, because yep. like you're outside and you're like you know you're kind of like. You know, happy and free, and you know, skip in and jump in, and there's insects and stuff and dead st- whatever. Yeah. Um, but they force you to go inside, into the pitch black first room. Yeah. And there's no option to turn on your flashlight or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It literally makes you walk into complete darkness. Yeah. And then the door slams behind you, and then your flashlight goes on, and you're like. Holy okay. crap! Like I remember taking a few steps in and being like, "I can't do this," and I turn around and go back out. Really? Right? I wow. go, I go back in, and I'm like, "I don't know if I can do this." I take a few steps back out, and I'm huh. like, you know, you, and then you take off the headset and you and you look around your apartment or your house or your living room, right? And, and you're like, "Everything is fine. Hmm. I can do this." And then you put it back on and you go, "I don't know if I can do this." <laughs> and that's the reaction I had for the entire game. That's great. I, I, <laughs> I, I I'm jealous. I, I wish I could have that reaction. I mean, what the reaction I have when this is something that I think they absolutely deserve credit for. You know, okay, it's not the the highest resolution, c- cleanest, crispest, yep. clearest image, but there's something about the way the um, I don't know if it's their their engine or just the design of the building, but something about it seems so so much more uh, crisp and real about it even though there's some 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 blurriness and some fuzziness it just feels like such a real place right off the bat and this is a game that's you know almost a year old now yeah uh and We're there. There, there's games that are you know coming out today that still haven't figured this out yet so 
Absolutely. I mean, the, the house is a work of art, you know, uh, it's, it's disgusting and horrible and falling apart. But it really is. I mean, the decay of the house really echoes kind of the decay and the falling apart of the victim slash monsters that you'll be dealing with. Um, and it's just such I, 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 I can't really praise it enough on how much work and effort they put into setting this place. And it feels like such a real horrible place to be. And while we're on the topic yeah. of Capcom doing their due diligence to make mm -hmm. it an awesome PSVR experience, uh, there's been, I think, a lot of talk on the internet about... <gasps> talk on the internet? How dare they? <laughs> about how Capcom ported this thing over to VR in like two months. Ooh. Hey guys, there's, there's more to the story than that, yeah. right? What, what Capcom did was when, when they were making this game, they also were creating an engine. Right, the RE engine, I think they call it. Yeah, and in and they started Re VR. <laughs> there you go. They started work on it in twenty. They started work on the VR engine in twenty fifteen. All right, so like two full years before mm. the game came out, they 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 had created this engine which allowed things to be ported into it. Right. So it took them two months to take the game they had created and port it into an yep. engine that took them two years to make. So right. just keep in mind, like I know a lot of people out there are like, well, if, if Capcom can do this with Resident Evil 7 in two months, then all companies should be able to do this with their games in a couple months. But yeah. Capcom has a buttload of money and a ton of employees. Mm -hmm. So just even that two-month porting process, there were probably like hundreds oh, of people working yeah. on that. And it wasn't just like a small little, hey, this is our VR team. Right. There's, and there was two years that went into the, the ability to port it over in two months first. So yeah. hey, if we get Resident Evil Eight, let's hope that, that could, that's in VR as well. Right, but, and, and, but you got to let all these other smaller companies make their VR engine as well. Yeah, no, it, and it's I, I think it's one thing like we're uh, a, a lot of us don't understand, and I'm um, you know if you do understand and you are a programmer and you know exactly what I'm talking about, obviously I'm not talking to you. But for the the vast majority of us, we really don't understand what it takes to make one of these games work. You can't just take a first person shooter. And just flip a switch and make it VR. You Otherwise, know? everything would already be in VR. Right, right. The 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 angles and the perspectives and the focus and all that are two are very different things in the two types of gaming. So, um, the fact that they could even do that in two months is astonishing. Um, but again, what they were doing in two months was just taking, you know, they built a house and they put stickers on it. Putting the stickers was easy. It was building the house was really really hard. So, uh, yeah, let's let's give credit where credit's due. Yeah. Now, this game controls with the DualShock 4. Yes. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people are like, I need move controllers. I need immersion. I need to see my hands. Yeah. D d listen, here's, here's, here's what works for me. Here's why I love the fact that this is DualShock. Because I know how to use a DualShock, right? I know how to use move controls. Mm -hmm. But, like, with Windlands or... Uh, what else? Uh, paranormal Activity or any of these games that you can just you can move around freely. Yeah. You with the move controllers, it takes like forever to get used to those controls. Oh. With a DualShock Four, man, I know how a first-person shooter works. Right. right. This is this is a game in first person. I I I sit down. Yeah, I forget where my hands are. I put it on my lap with my DualShock, mm. and man, I am I am like moving around that house like nobody's business, and I am immersed because I don't have to think about what my hands are doing. I don't have to yeah. think about how to interact with this game. And, and so some people are like, if I can't see my hands, I'm not immersed. Well, if I don't have to worry about my hands, then I'm immersed. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, yeah, I do have some problems with this game. Lack of immersion is not one of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it just, you know, the controls are very fluid, very smooth as far as that, you know, goes. And again, if you're someone who's kind of grown up on, you know, controlling first-person action with a controller, this is going to be very natural. So that's, yeah, that, that's not even, I mean, we're starting to get more and more of this, this weird feedback about, like, this game isn't immersive because of this and that. Immersion isn't necessarily just a thing that happens from the game. You have to kind of get involved too. Um, and so if you're just going to say, I don't care what happens if I'm holding the, uh, the dual shock, I'm not going to be immersed. That, that's kind of on you. So, yeah. Uh, so we started talking a little bit about the story. Yes. You know, uh, you're, you're in search for your missing wife, Mia. Yeah. Right. But that's not the real story here. Right. She's, she's definitely the MacGuffin, but yeah. Right. But, but if, if, 
once you get into the house, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, we're still looking for her and stuff. <laughs> we're still trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. But the real story is the family that lives in this house. The Bakers. Yeah, I think we talked about it. We'll, we'll do some spoilers for, let's say, the first, you know, hour or so of the game. But after that, kind of you're on your own. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've played, if you haven't played this game yet, mm -hmm. first of all, go play it. Yeah. If you're waiting for us to, to, to rate it, just go play it. It's if, a you, one. if you like scary games, if you like Resident Evil games, if you like VR games, if you want a big adventure in <laughs> VR, this is your game. There's almost nobody I wouldn't recommend this to. Mm -hmm. Like even even you, like this isn't my genre. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? I did. Go I did. play it. Yeah. Okay. So and so you can stop the video right here <laughs> if you haven't played it yet. But for the rest of us who have played it, yeah. it there's going to be some minor spoilers. And and I will say even at the fact that her turn is you know predictable, it is so shocking and violent and like the 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 level of violence, maybe the level, the type, or the flavor. How about the flavor of violence in this is so different and bizarre. Like okay, at one point. She stabs your hand into the wall with a screwdriver yeah. out of nowhere. It's just like, oh, that was probably one of the most shocking and incredibly violent things I've seen in gaming. If you'd had a mood controller in your hand, you probably would have dropped it. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, just it so came out of nowhere with this, you know, thing that's not really a weapon of violence. And that was amazing. Then she proceeds to do other stuff. But uh, so even though it is very kind of by the book sort of horror story. There's this, again, this flavor to the things that just makes... It, it's crazy town. Yeah. She's not fucking eating it! Yeah. Or no, he's not. He's not eating it. Sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, oh, my God. I love that line. That, there's this whole moment, the first time you meet the whole family. You've met uh, Jack, the, the father. He's kind of knocks you out. And, and you wake up at this uh, table. And then there's Marguerite, the mom, and Jack, and Lucas. And having this dinner scene, which is just... Yeah, crazy town. Gruesome. Yeah. Yeah. It seems. It seems like it. It actually reminds me of like, like a like if you went to a, a really nice haunted house, and it, like and you saw you saw a family like eating like just disgusting food. Yeah. And like and like force feeding it into each other's mouths and stuff and like screaming and acting like hillbillies. Yeah. Like this seems like a scene you would see in a really well acted haunted house. You'd walk by it and go, "I'm good." Yeah. 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 And 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 this particular point, you're tied to your chair and you have to just kind of sit there and, and watch the whole thing yeah um you know the, the first section of the game i think is is still by far my favorite because it's just you and the bakers well uh, yeah anyways we'll just say the bakers we'll leave it alone yeah in, in the house and you're really just trying to creep around and like oh crap i heard someone in that room i need to not be there and it, there's, there's this definite sense of just dread and oppression of i don't know what's going on my wife has now turned to this insane person who's tried to kill me. Are we still trying to save her? Am I just trying to get out alive? Yeah. And uh, the the few times you do interact with um with Jack, he mops the floor with your ass. I mean, there's no you know, uh, so it's not like you can get in there and kill him and get out of the way. You just have to hide. Um, I know. Yes, yes, does that's what survival horror means. <laughs> I get it. But uh, it's just it's just very the the environment they create the sense they create is really oppressive and and very well done. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, if as you hear me talk about this game as if it's the scariest thing I've ever done because it was, um, <laughs> and and you and you're sitting there and you've like I played through this on Xbox One and it's not that scary. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. If you haven't played through this game completely in VR, there are moments. Where just opening a door is just like, I don't, I don't know. You're like <laughs> opening a door. There's a whole section where that I consider very haunted house like uh, mm -hmm. later on in, in the game. Right. Where, where everything is, is very, very dark. It's set up like just, just to scare you. It's like, it's, it's almost, it's almost, it almost removes itself from the rest of the game because of the way it's structured. Uh, because, yeah, because it is like so haunted house like. And I'm like, that's fine. Like, <laughs> this is doing exactly what I want it to do to me. And if you play through this on a regular television, right? I've tried. Mm -hmm. I have. I've, I've played through parts of this game on a regular television. And it just feels, maybe because I played it in VR already, but it feels extra flat. Like it feels 
flatter than like I, than I remember Bioshock One being. Right? It just feels really flat, and, yeah. and so you don't get that sense of presence. You don't get that immersion. And so again, if you've played through this on a flat screen television, you have no idea what you're missing. This, yeah. This is. Actually, well, I'll save that till the end. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, man, so many things I want to talk about in this game. It, 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 VHS tapes. Okay. Finding VHS tapes is awesome because VHS tapes will like show you parts of the game you haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. They're like introductions to places you're going to be soon. Yeah. And they sort of like help reveal secrets about those areas. It's like kind of masterfully done yeah it's a really it's a really creative way to kind of give you a tutorial about you know how to solve certain kinds of puzzles or maybe uh something you missed or didn't see the first time you went through and you're like oh crap now i can go back and, and so that's, that's really well done i mean there are like as you go through there are collectibles and you know you can look up and and read letters and get hints of the whole plot but um, you know, and that's the way many other games would handle that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, to be fair, I mean, this does that as well. But the idea of using the, these VHS tapes, and not just and if you haven't played this, it's not a cutscene. You're nope. not just. It's actually like a an event you're playing through. So just you're, as a different character in a different time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The first one, you know, you hit right off the bat. Remember that news van you passed? <laughs> Well, you actually see... <laughs> found them. <laughs> yeah, found them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you see what happened to that crew, and, um, well, yeah, some not good things. Not good things. So so the other night... Yes. Was, you know, enjoying the Halloween season, mm-hmm. right? I, uh, Pumpkin spice, all the things. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's not cold enough. <laughs> I want it to be cold enough. No, I was not? drinking iced coffee today. It's, like, just not cold enough. Right, right. Want it to be colder. Yeah, well, so maybe it'll will have gotten colder by the time this hits, but when we're recording this, we've had like three or four days in a row of 70 degree weather. Yeah, and we're not recording this like like months in advance or anything. It's just a few days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so but, so the other day, so no, last night, I was I, I ordered a pizza. Like you do. Like, like I might do again tonight. <laughs> uh, it was delicious. And, um, and, and, and then I went on the PlayStation Store mm-hmm. because they were having the sale of the dead. Yes. And I picked up all six Paranormal Activity movies for like $22. Okay. I was like, that's a deal. I'm going to watch all of these at least 20 times each. All right. Right? Because I love those movies. I love scary things. Paranormal Activity is the best. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of lost track, to be honest with you. Oh. But. (laughs) And. (laughs) No, but the reason I'm telling you this is because I've seen all those movies. I've probably seen all those movies like two or three times. (laughs) Right. And I was watching, and I was like, I was like, and I was, I was watching. I was like, you know, this is still fun to watch. I'm enjoying yeah. it because it's got the spooky vibe and stuff. And it keeps getting funnier every <laughs> single time I see it. <laughs> nice. But so the reason I brought this up mm. is because they horror movies lose impact every time you watch them. Yeah, it's like they they might still be well told or well constructed or or they're fun to watch, but they they lose the horror vibe, the horror edge. The more you watch them, the more familiar you are with them. Yeah. The reason I bring that up is because Resident Evil 7 is great for multiple playthroughs. I finished the first time on normal difficulty, whatever the default setting is, mm-hmm. normal. Uh, like I said, how many hours? 14, something like that? 14, yeah. And then I immediately wanted to play through again. And now you have Madhouse difficulty. And Madhouse difficulty is harder. Right, the 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 molded, which we didn't even talk about this episode. The molded are like the the zombies of the game. Yeah. Nice. Uh, in the first time I saw one, I almost shit myself. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> so the, the molded take more bullets to kill, uh, and and things get placed in different places. Like the first one of the first keys that you usually find mm. is now under lock and key. Like you you need to find all those hidden coins that again we didn't talk about this right. episode just to unlock it. So like. Pl- things are placed in different places and because of that i was like i i'm going through right now and going i i, I don't i don't i don't know if i don't know if jack's gonna jump out yeah i, I don't know if there's gonna be a new scare right, right? things have changed enough. things yeah. have changed right yeah. so it gives you a whole nother reason to play through again and even better than that because you already beat it once capcom went hey here's a gun Right. right. Here's a gun you didn't even have your first playthrough. Here you go. It's much stronger than your last gun. You're like, yeah. sweet. And you know what? Every subsequent playthrough that you do gives you a different gun to start or an extra gun to start off with, a little little more in your arsenal. You know, and, and then they give you 
perks like unlimited ammo right? right and eventually you have like a rocket launcher from the start <laughs> with unlimited ammo and you're like this is how i want to play every game so yeah resident evil 7 is like paranormal activity movie right it loses its kind of horror impact the more you play it the more frequently you get through it mm -hmm. The, there was a we were watching a speed run yeah the, the guy the guy's finishing it like an hour and a half yeah and and i've said over and over that resident evil 7 is a game that i want to play like at least once a year and if i could get to the point where i could beat that game in an hour and a half i play it like that's, once a month yeah that, that's crazy it's crazy <laughs> and so and, and so i am actually looking forward to not only beating madhouse but meeting madhouse over and over and over mm -hmm. again for like the rest of my life this is a game i'm never going to stop playing yeah. like this is this is already a classic for me there is there is one thing I I, I do want to point out, for, lest we be uh, uh, you know guilty of being a total love fest um, yeah. for this game. Okay, good. you know there's there's kind of like two main shifts, and the, the molded I think are part of it. Like like I was saying, like for me that first bit in the house, that's like a perfectly crafted game yep. there. Once the molded and kind of like the science fictiony sort of rest of the ozone. I started to lose a little interest because for me, like suddenly like, if you're in this house and like, you know, there's only, you know, three or four people that you have to worry about. Every Creek is suddenly like, was that something or was it not hmm. now? Once like the mold and the zombies start, it's like, okay, well now stuff can happen all the time. So I'm just ready all the time. Like there's, you know, so that, that was, I, I still yeah. think this play, this, this is something that you experienced mm -hmm. that, most people, I don't feel, I don't think feel this way. Yeah. Because, because when suddenly you're in danger all the time, right. you're on edge all the time. I think, I think that's yeah. how most normal people react to being in danger. You somehow have the uh, adverse effect. Right. Well, if I'm in, in danger all the time, then I don't need to be <laughs> super hyper vigilant because I just know I'm in danger all the time. Which is mind boggling to me. Yeah. yeah 14 hours, just petrified. Poor, poor childhood. Uh, the, the, other, <laughs> the other thing, and I think this is one that is a little more universal. Yeah. There there comes a point in the game where you leave the house or the plantation area. And I think from that point on, the 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 depth of effort they put in the environments definitely takes a downturn. It's it's rough, man. Like there yeah. right when you think this game should end, mm -hmm. it should have. It's like the last yes. quarter of the game, like the last like four hours or something, or the last yeah. well on your first playthrough. I don't know how long it's gonna take you. Um the last few hours of the game. Uh it, but like here's the thing. In my book, every Resident Evil is, is guilty of this. Yeah. Uh, even the first one, the second one, third one. By the time you get near the end, you end up like in uh, like the Umbrella Labs or something like that, where like everything is like this cold steel static. Like it's just less interesting. It's less scary, uh, and it's it's just yeah. they all kind of get boring near the end. And this game is absolutely guilty of that. I still enjoyed it thoroughly, mm -hmm. but it, it definitely didn't live up to, like, the first three quarters of the game. Well, and here's the weird thing. It's like, I think the developers recognize this and kind of put a hat on it because you get through, like, this really sort of, well, I don't want to say boring, but at least design-wise, pretty boring area. And you, you know you're getting to the end. It's just like, okay, you know, I've got monsters and all, but this isn't exciting to look at. One of the last segments of the game is you flashing back to the beginning of the game. <laughs> Okay. And and you you get it from a slightly different perspective, but it's almost like the developers are like, yeah, this isn't great. You know what was great? Oh, way back in the, that was really good. You want to see that again? Let's do that again instead. So yeah, it was. Um, it's definitely, you know, there's a big choice you have to make. Let's say that, yeah. and you can kind of shut it off after you've made that choice and and be okay. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if if you're like me, like here the deal is is that for me, even the worst part of this game is still better than pretty much every other PlayStation VR game we have. In my humble opinion, because because I like the gameplay so much, yeah. it's like it's almost like saying, hey, for the next three hours, this is going to be more of a shooter. This is going to be more of a, you know, a backtrack-a-thon where you're just like constantly being uh, like, oh, yeah. let's grab this key card and run back and forth and do this and then do that. And it's like, you know, maybe the scares are gone, but the gameplay is still fun enough mm -hmm. where you're like, all right, here's a new environment and here's some new places to find. Maybe I'll find some new guns, you know. Yeah. It, it definitely jumps off a cliff, but the beginning three quarters of this game are Absolutely. so good that yeah. it, in my book, makes up for it. I, I will, yeah, we'll... We, we this is going way long, but one little other pen. Capcom, you need to hire some people who know how to design puzzles. Yeah, 
you give it your best shot, but honestly, like the you know. Right off the bat, you're introduced to one kind of puzzle mechanic where you have this projector and these weird shaped objects, and you have to kind of turn them around to make the shadow meet. Interesting, interesting puzzle mechanic. I like it, but I don't like it doing six times exactly the same way. Right. Um, yeah. When I when I said that it gives me warm fuzzies because it's so classic <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil. It's classic Resident. Unfortunately, Evil. the bad stuff came along with the good. You know, safe rooms are awesome, and I love you know minimal crafting, and I you know I like item boxes. Yeah. And limited inventory, but but I mean the puzzles are tried and true Resident Evil. Like this is this is this is crap from RE One where you're like this isn't even a puzzle. Yeah. This is this is just stupid half the time. Fetch quests are not puzzles. They're not. Thank you. They're not. So it's is it a perfect game? No, it's not. But it's time to rate this sucker. Okay. All right. It's a one, yeah. man. Fucking buy this thing. Yeah, as much as I sounds like I might be crapping on it, um, because again, I want to say, not my genre, not my subgenre, mm-hmm. but the absolute best of either of those things you're gonna play, I think in in any you know in non VR or VR, I yeah, this is if you're even the slightest bit interested. In this um, series, in Resident Evil, and if you're slightest bit interested in horror games at all, uh, this, yeah, this is, oh, uh, this is definitely a one. And I will say, I did mention at the beginning, as far as Dez's sicknesses goes, when the very first time Brian had me play this, I didn't even make it to the house. I was just like halfway down the path, like, nope, I'm done. Um, and yeah, that was pretty early on, right? Yeah, it was, it was real, real, real fast. Uh, no, now, but I mean, like, it was early on in your VR days. Oh, I think it was one of the first things you had me try. Oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't Drive Club with my track record. No, that was actually the first thing you had me I, try was Drive Club. <laughs> but, can't, um, believe, can't believe you and my mother don't hate me. But uh, I can't believe you got me to try it again. <laughs> but what I was saying, oh, uh, so now, I mean, a good hour or so, and in, uh, um, I after an hour, I'm, I'm kind of done. But it's not as bad. You know, I've got, you know, you do have... They give you crazy amounts of control on the navigation, yep. on the um, you know whatever comfort settings, whatever you want to call it. So I did have I had the shutter tr- zoomed down to like I mean I had like this little square. Yeah, totally. Yeah, all the blinders on you could. Yeah. You oh yeah. Use yeah. click turning. I did. Yep. yep. And so I mean I was definitely doable. If you're super sensitive to motion sickness, this is gonna this is gonna be rough. So I I, I do need to put an asterisk next to my one, but it's still a one. Yeah. This is but I mean you know this isn't this isn't a here they lie. This, no, 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 nothing like that. No. This is this is a big a big budget, uh, full first person game. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, there, there's there's no question in my book that it's one. Uh, you know, in in the fact that it's that sometimes it's on sale because it came out back in 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 January, right? Yeah. This this thing came out three months after PlayStation VR launched. Like we did not have to wait very long for our killer app. Yeah, uh, we were absolutely thrilled about this. Uh, it's Halloween, guys. Like this is. This is the time to play scary games. Uh, freaking you and Jeremy, man. The, the 4D candle. If you really, really need a little extra immersion, there's a 4D candle out there. I don't know if they're still available. But, man, this thing does not smell very good. It's supposed to smell like the Baker Estate. It's supposed mm. to smell like... Oh, God. That was a bad idea. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine... I, I can't imagine this, lighting it. Yeah. I, I bought it as a collectible. I'm never gonna light it, but I can only imagine that it smells infinitely worse once it's on fire. It's bad. Yeah. Talk about motion sick. It's regular <laughs> sick. All right, you guys. That was it. That was our Hall- Halloween episode of the very first episode of Why We Love VR, also known as episode 110 of Gaming Without Parole. Yeah. Um. Thank you so much for being with us on the this run up to here. You know, for those of you who are like super upset about us, us changing the name, well, that's yeah. all that's changing is the name. Uh, it's still going to be us. It's still going to be us talking on and on about games we love. So if that's something you like, stick with us. And if you just like the name, well, we'll make you a t-shirt and you can keep that. We're okay. not making anyone a t-shirt. No, we're not. No. <laughs> for why we love PSVR, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Desra. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>